So I figured I did a video on cannabis with dyspraxia and um, that's like one of my third most popular videos. So I figured I'd touch on another psychoactive substance that may or may not affect one's dyspraxia, either enhancing or affecting certain effects of it. So I can't believe it took me this long to get to this topic. But what I do want to say is I do not condone the use of any psychoactive substances. This video and nothing on this channel should ever indicate or promote the use of any psychoactive substance. So without any further ado, this is tobacco with dyspraxia. So one important thing to keep in mind is that nicotine is water soluble which means it can be consumed in many ways there is no one specific way although the two most common ways are through vaporization buckle administration and smoking and so i'm going to talk about these two dipping and smoking in this video uh just because i'm dyspraxic i can never keep a vape i keep losing it and well, these two are the ones that I'm most familiar with. And again, I just want to press this. This whole channel is my subjective effects and my view of certain aspects of the world and how I've kind of interacted with them as an individual with dyspraxia. This won't be the same for everyone. Every drug affects everybody differently. And yes, nicotine is a drug. So the first thing to keep in mind is that Nicotine is incredibly addictive, like ridiculously addictive, and well, I made a whole video on how dyspraxia may or may not correlate with substance abuse and how it really typically doesn't. Uh, an argument can be made, so it is important to keep in mind that you probably shouldn't ever pick up a cigarette. This is a very, very bad habit. You risk cancer, you risk lung disease, emphysema, getting shorter, terrible teeth. It's, it's terrible for you. Don't ever start doing any tobacco whatsoever. But say you're already dyspraxic. All right, you're a typical teenager, you're hanging out with the boys, and they start passing around cigarettes. Well, shit, what do I do? First thing you do is throw that cigarette the fuck away. And if you can't, you gotta light it. Now, if you're dyspraxic, a lighter is going to be your worst nightmare if you have never used one before. Especially if they're a bit with safety. The best thing you can do if you are planning on smoking anything at all is to get a lighter either without the safety, like one of the older cheaper lighters, or take the safety off. Now, if your dyspraxia affects you to the point that you can't use a big lighter, you probably won't be able to take the safety off. So just try to get one of the cheap lighters to begin with, or even like one of those little torches, as many torches you can get at any head shop. It took me years before I was ever able to properly use a big lighter. I used to have someone take the safety off for me just so I could use it because that thing will block you if you have terrible fine motor control. That's kind of what it's designed to do is it's well it's kind of like a child safety feature because no kid really around the age of six or seven maybe around eight but up until then they don't really have the fine motor control to be able to press down and flick. And, well, to most of us as dyspraxics, we don't really get to that point very easily. I mean, I still kind of struggle with these things once in a while. So once you've got a lighter that you can light with, the goal is to actually inhale the smoke that comes through the filter when you light it. Damn. <laughs> This is another very hard part, even for people who aren't dyspraxic. You see, the human lungs aren't designed to inhale smoke. 
So especially the first time you smoke a cigarette, it's going to kick you in the lungs and you're going to want to reject it immediately. And this typically for most people tends to turn them off cigarettes from the get go. Being dyspraxic and being able to control your breath in that way takes a lot of practice. For the first like couple months I started smoking, I literally wasn't inhaling the smoke at all. And I didn't even realize it. I felt like I was, but I wasn't. If you really insist on inhaling your tobacco smoke, and if you're around people and you're trying not to get into smoking, don't inhale and try to get away with it. But sometimes you get the peer pressure. But what you want to keep in mind is that your goal is to inhale the smoke, not just breathe it in. So when you suck the smoke from the tobacco, it sits in your mouth. So when you, when you exhale, you're, although you're sucking the smoke into your mouth, it's not actually hitting your lungs. You want it to hit your lungs if you're going for the whole tobacco vibe. So in order to do that, you kind of have to hold the smoke in your mouth and then act like someone just caught you smoking that you don't want catching you smoking. So you gasp. And once you gasp, you'll actually inhale that, that smoke for the first time and you'll cough for like 20 minutes because, well, it's your first cigarette. That's how it does. So just as an example, I'm going to show you. And there, completely inhaled. This will take you a while, even after you first inhale and this is why it's best to use that as your opportunity to never smoke again because seriously once you start it is near impossible to stop and well yes you can stop it is doable there are many situations in which you'll find yourself craving a cigarette and kind of relapsing and the best way to do it is cold turkey but longest i've ever made it was two weeks man one day one day but you see that's the crazy part about addiction in general is just that you never really plan on getting it it's not something you go out of your way to get it's just one day you smoke and then the next day you're feeling fine and then a day later you're craving another cigarette it's just kind of the way the dopamine and all that works there's actual science behind how addiction works and you know i could get into it but I'd rather not. This video is going to be long enough as it is. There is a lot of chemistry involved in addiction, and there are many, many debates as to where addiction exactly is. And if you're really interested in my opinion on all that, I have a video called Substance Abuse with Dyspraxia that you can refer to. So check it out. But just know that when it comes to the effects of tobacco, they're not as apparent as, say, the effects from something like marijuana or cocaine or LSD. The effects are rather subtle, but they are somewhat euphoric, especially after your first cigarette. You're definitely going to feel that little wooziness, that little dizziness. Room might start spinning a little bit. You get kind of like a minor stimulant high, but it's, it's nothing significant and it's nothing that you'll grow an attachment to, especially once you start smoking like a pack a week. This is why many people are what you'd call social smokers and that they only smoke with other people because their addiction is more tied to social situations. This is something that's very common amongst dyspraxics from what I can tell and why many of us end up getting into vaping, but I'm not going to talk about vaping in this video. That's a controversial issue, and that deserves a whole video of its own. So if you want that, just let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll make a video on that. Now I saved this part for the second part, because most of you are not going to want to watch this part. This is smokeless tobacco, or dip, or chew. And this is kind of gross, so... If you're not looking to hear about spitting or saliva in any way, shape, or form, then leave this video, and um, I'll have another one next week. I think I have another table update next week. Watch out for that. 
I will not be talking specifically about chewing tobacco, but I will be talking about what many consider moist snuff or dip or dipping tobacco, as it's called sometimes. Essentially, I'm talking about the thing that comes in cans, not in bags. Although, I might do a video on chewing tobacco, too, if anyone's interested in that. Now, many of you who follow my channel are people who know me personally, so you may or may not know that I actually started on YouTube a long time ago before I made this channel, and what I used to do was dip reviews, so... This part's gonna be long. So, when it comes to dip, and especially with dyspraxia, if you're going to be consuming tobacco of any kind, your most hassle-free way of doing so is with dip. Now, technically, technically, under specific technicalities, and you will hear every dipper say this, dip is technically, very much technically, safer than cigarettes. That being said, it is not a safe alternative, it is not a replacement, but if you are stuck, forced at gunpoint to consume tobacco, and you have to make an option of cigarettes or dip, you should go with dip. And while dip is extremely gross, it has significantly less medical health effects kind of associated with it. Yeah, you've got the dry mouth, you've got the risk of mouth cancer, and if you don't brush your teeth enough, yeah, you're going to get some gator lip, and you may risk some other issues like gum recession and, you know, gingivitis and teeth falling out and stuff like that. But as long as you actually, like, maintain your, your dental health on a semi-regular level, it shouldn't be that damaging to your health. But that being said, like I said, you definitely do still run the risk of cancer. It's still a carcinogen, and it's still an expensive habit. It's money you're spending on nicotine in which half the time you're not really getting any experience from because you built a tolerance anyway. So don't get started on dip just because I'm putting dip over for a minute because dip isn't infallible. Just like all people, nothing is infallible. And given enough people and enough time, we'll find a reason to die off of anything. There's always that Darwin Award around the corner. Now, when it comes to consuming dip, what you're essentially doing is you're going to take a lip. And this is probably going to be a hard part, especially if your fine motor is affected. But you want to take a lip and you want to make sure it's not huge. You take a huge dip, especially your first time, you're going to make yourself sick, all right? But also, you don't want to take too small a thing because then you'll accidentally swallow it, and, well, you don't ever want to swallow this stuff. That is a bad idea. So now, essentially, what you do is you place it in between your lip and your gum. Many people will hold their, their like, gum open to do it, I don't have to do that. I've been dipping for years. Hmm. But then it just sits there and then you decide a placement. And then the effects take hold almost immediately because what's happening is the nicotine is being absorbed sublingually through the gums and the cheek. This is essentially a mucous membrane. The whole inside of your mouth is a mucous membrane. And so everything just kind of if it's water soluble, it gets absorbed and sh sent straight to the bloodstream. So this is probably one of the strongest ways to get your nicotine. Little bonus fact, if um, you think somebody is having a heart attack and um, you call 911, one of the best things you can do is you can give them two aspirin, tell them to chew on it and hold it under their tongue. And just like how dip is being absorbed sublingually, the, it'll work faster that way. And then, you know, aspirin has been shown to thin the blood, so it can help. It's not going to, like, save anyone's life directly or anything, but it can help, especially in the future. And you also want to make sure that you tell the, the first responders that you did that. But that's, that's just kind of a, a little first aid thing that... Now that you've had this dip in for a minute, your mouth is going to fill with saliva. Now your mouth naturally fills with saliva and you naturally swallow this saliva. This is kind of how humans work and this is kind of one of the biggest drawbacks of dyspraxia. 
You see, when you have dyspraxia, it affects a lot of things in many ways due to the lag of when our brain receives information and when it actually outputs and then reacts. We typically can't control many autonomic functions that most people can kind of take for granted. One of those things for many people is managing saliva and swallowing when you're supposed to swallow. This is kind of hard sometimes to deal with. Occasionally you swallow your own spit and kind of choke on it. I think everyone has at some point because a lot of people relate to that, but it happens a lot more for dyspraxics mostly. But with dip, you have to know when to spit and that's typically when your mouth fills with saliva. So it's kind of helped me in that respect to some extent because it really kind of dries your mouth out. But you still do have to spit when your mouth fills with that saliva because what's happening is your, your mouth is recognizing there's something in there. And typically when there's something in there, it means you're trying to eat something, which means it needs to secrete the saliva to help break down whatever's in your mouth. Problem is this saliva is mixing with the nicotine in your dip. And if you swallow that, now you're sending nicotine filled saliva into your stomach. And your stomach doesn't take to nicotine very well. But the common, you know, misconception is that people think you're spitting the actual tobacco out, you're not. The tobacco is still sitting here. You're just spitting out the excess saliva, and this is essentially what dip spit is. It's just the extra spit that's built up with the dip in there that you're trying not to swallow, because if you swallow that, well, you look at any spinner and you can notice the tobacco is kind of dirty looking water and that's not something you want in your stomach i can assure you this is where there's another common misconception in people dipping with pouches they claim they don't have to spit with pouches and well the thing is that's not entirely true you're still swallowing the nicotine saliva it's just kind of more concentrated because you've got the bag and the barrier and so yeah, with things like snooze and like that, you, you can swallow. It's not going to be as harsh to your stomach as something like, you know, long cut. But at the same time, you're still swallowing that tobacco and you're still doing damage to your stomach. And so if you're doing pouches just so it doesn't make you spit, stop because you're not helping yourself at all. If you dip pouches, you are ripping yourself off. Now, I just did an experiment a long time ago back on my dip channel. And what I did was I bought a can of Copenhagen Wintergreen and Copenhagen Wintergreen pouches. And what I did was I emptied all the pouches into one can and found it fairly made up like over half a can. That's about it. You're wasting your money if you get pouches. If you're buying dip, don't get pouches. I know the placement's a little easier or whatever, but come on, man. You dip for like a week on the long cut and you'll have it down pat. You'll have your exact size and you can actually size it. With pouches, you can't size the pouches. You, you can pick out, if you're, if you're not feeling like having a big dip, you can pick out a tiny bit. With the pouch, you're getting the same size every time. And that takes away your buyer choice. And, well, that's not cool. That's not customer friendly at all. But when it comes to dip and dyspraxia, you have significantly less complications, at least in the outset. Once you get started smoking, it, it, it's like a bicycle. Once you know how to smoke properly, you smoke the same way every time. And then you build your tolerance and then you get addicted. Seriously, don't start dipping, don't start smoking. I would never suggest that to anyone who watches this channel. I just thought it was relatively interesting talking about how my dyspraxia has affected my tobacco use too sometimes. Would I say that tobacco negatively affects dyspraxia in any way? Possibly. Um, cigarettes have been shown to kind of increase anxiety in those prone to it. So because dyspraxia can commonly create anxiety in some individuals, yeah, you probably shouldn't be consuming anything that can enhance that. Although typically most people, as well as dyspraxics, are consuming tobacco for its anxiolytic properties. So they're taking it to kind of curb their anxiety. 
And in that respect, tobacco can possibly be considered therapeutic in the most bare bones of terms, but there's so many more better solutions out there than smoking cigarettes, so I heavily wouldn't suggest smoking cigarettes as any kind of treatment for dyspraxic symptoms, and if anything, it'll make your symptoms worse, because once you start withdrawing, that shit is hell, especially when you have dyspraxia. Not only do you feel things with dyspraxia, you get a little bit of lag, and then it hits you ten times as hard. So, you really don't want to go through nicotine withdrawal. This is something that a lot of people like to joke about with cannabis as well, is that the withdrawal is so negligible that, like, oh, you know, no one would, would be as bad as, say, some stereotypical crackhead. But the unfortunate fact of life is that even the most legal of drugs like nicotine and especially alcohol, I'm coming for you alcohol, I'm going to do a video on you, you just wait. One day, anytime you're hitting specific dopamine and serotonin receptors in the brain, you're risking addiction. This is common with things like gambling and sex as well, but it's doubly so for something like tobacco because tobacco is just incredibly addictive so if you can avoid tobacco like you avoid crystal meth then please do and if you do both then please don't because that's kind of really bad i did talk about this video kind of being harm reduction and in some respect it is because you know i made sure that anyone who's going to consume tobacco is going to you know, know to spit their saliva right away or smoke properly, but at the end of the day, consuming tobacco, it, it's just seemingly a pointless drug to take, honestly. It's one of the safer ones, sure, maybe you could kind of make that argument, but at the same time, it's it's not something that you should want to be doing. And if you do smoke and you feel the desire to quit, and you can, please do, because it's not one of those fun habits like cannabis or the occasional alcohol, not, not too much alcohol, but the occasional alcohol, or, you know, take the edge off once in a while. With tobacco, you just kind of start and never stop. So I would heavily avoid it, personally. Unfortunately, I didn't, and... Just as we can't live in a perfect world, there will always be people who consume tobacco. So, it's really best not to get all super tied up over it either. If you see someone smoking, don't get on their ass about it. They probably heard it a million times. And really, all you're doing is making them feel worse about something that they feel they really don't have that kind of control over. As much as we want to say we can quit when we want, it's not that simple, and everybody knows that, including you. And just like there can be a negative to every situation, there can be a positive too. Sure, you're getting some minor anxiolytic properties. If you're dipping, you're slightly technically safer than smoking. You can always kind of find the positivity in every situation, and by all means, please do that if you can, especially if you're going through a much more tense situation than your cigarette addiction. There are significantly worse addictions out there, and I'm sure every single one of us knows that. That's why the whole cigarette hysteria kind of stopped in the mid-2000s. But still, you know, try to be safe out there, everyone. And if you, you can, just remember the old cliche, discretion is a better part of valor. So... Make your decisions. You gotta live with risks sometimes. And if you can make a calculated risk, make sure it's definitely a calculated one. But that's all for this video, everyone. I appreciate you watching this far, especially past the dipping part. But yeah, I am getting some stickers. They should be coming in like a week, so I'll have a table update next week. Um, should, at least. If they come properly, I don't know how Amazon's delivering anymore. Because they're starting to lock down a bunch of states again. That second wave is about to hit. Oh boy, that's going to be a big one. But that's all for this video, everyone. You guys, have a good one.